scales. No, not this type of scale. I'm talking about these bad boys. The 12 major scales. Now, they may look scary, but they're actually not as bad as you might think. We're going to be going over how to tackle these scales, how to learn all 12 of them, plus the chromatic scale. Yee. What exactly is a scale? Well, scales are to music like addition and subtraction is to math. They're the very foundation of everything in music. Like, just like in math, how addition and subtraction, everything is based off of that, like multiplication, and you get, you know, square roots and all this other stuff, and from subtraction you get division, and then all this other crazy math stuff. It's the same thing in music. Scales are the very foundation of music. Everything from minor scales to chords to jazz and all this other crazy stuff, it all comes from these 12 major scales. It's super important to learn, and it may look daunting to learn all 12 of these scales, but they're actually not as scary as you might think. I'm going to prove it to you right now. I'm going to play every single note in music. This is every single note ever possible to play in music. Here we go. Every single note. And then the next note is just an octave above the first note. That's just an octave from the last note. There's only 12 notes in music and there's 12 major scales. Now, when you think of it like that, Compared to like how many rhythms there are, there's all sorts of rhythms, but notes, there's only 12. It's only 12 major scales. So don't be afraid of scales, they're actually not that bad. All right, so then how do you go about learning all 12 major scales? Well, we know one, we know concert B flat. <laughs> That means there's only 11 left to go. Easy. Not so bad. Only 11 other skills left. It's not so bad. So how do we learn them? Well, the, the key to learning each skill is that you got to pick one skill, one scale, work on that skill for one week. And then after that, after that one week, you'll get way more comfortable with that one scale. Focus on one scale per week so you can really get comfortable in that scale. And to do that, this is where this bad boy fussel packet really comes in handy because there's lots of exercises here that works on getting comfortable with the scale as well as developing all other sorts of techniques. Mm -hmm. Since we know concert B flat, B flat for us trumpet players is no sharps, no flats. So we can go either way. We can either add one flat or we can add one sharp. If we add one flat, we look at the scale sheet you can see that the one flat would mean we're playing concert E flat. If we add a sharp, then we would be playing concert F. Now, it doesn't matter which way you go. You can learn all sharps first or all flats first. Typically, band music is written in flats. So us band kids are more used to reading flats, while orchestra is usually written in sharps. So orchestra kids are more used to reading sharps. So I recommend learning the flat keys first, just because they're just a tiny bit easier. But either way, you can go either way. In this video, we're gonna be working on E flat, concert E flat, one flat. Let's go ahead, look at concert E flat, take it nice and easy, get comfortable with that scale. Let's play it in whole notes. Here we go, concert E flat in whole notes. One, Three, one, two, ready. <laughs>
can play that scale or any scale in general in whole notes, but you can also play, you know, in half notes, quarter notes, then eighth notes, just anything to get to get to get comfortable with that scale. And it's great because you can play you can do long tones with scales. Oh, hitting two birds with one stone. You can oh you can play it in half notes and then whole notes and hold out those notes. And remember, when you're doing those long tones, the key is to make this our sound as steady and in tune and as smooth as possible throughout the entire exercise. And you doing those scales and whole notes and all that good stuff, it's a good idea to play it in front of a tuner. This is Sound Corset. It's free on Apple and Android. But it's even a better idea to play the scale with the drone on, and I'll quickly demonstrate that. So working on E flat. So I'll put on E flat drone, and then you just hear and try to match. skill in tune and to do that you got to use your ears you got to really listen to that drone and adjust if you hear waves in the drone if you hear wah, 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 then you got to adjust here there's something with your air but you got to listen and playing with the drone while playing scales in whole notes really good way to train your ears Yee. when we're working on these scales the goal is to be able to play this scale as written on the page at 120 beats per minute. And I'll demonstrate that what it, that sounds like really quick. When you're doing it, you wanna tongue up and slur on the way down. But first, slow it down and slowly speed it up as you work on these scales each week. Yee. All right, now let's go ahead and look at that fussel packet. Now the fussel packet is full of all sorts of good exercises when building up technique. It also helps a lot building up the scale, such as these thirds. And we're gonna play that right now. So when we're warming up every day, should spend a good chunk of our practice time playing the fussel packet, working on the scale we're currently in. And for this time, we're in E flat. So we're gonna play concert E flat in thirds. Concert E flat in thirds. So we're gonna play it twice. Here we go. One, three, one, two, ready. page 29 of the fussel packet page 29 of the fussel packet if we turn the page we can see the fourths now these are also great the fourths the fifths the sixths the octaves if you keep turning you can see all of them all of those are really great in not only working on articulation but also intervals and also our scales <laughs> That's like three birds and one stone, working on articulation, working on those intervals, and working on the scale. So the thirds, fourths, fifths, starting on page 29 of the Fussel Packet, really good stuff to practice every day when we're in our daily practice, in our individual practice, when we're warming up and building up that technique. Yee. Page 36 of the Fussel Packet, we see all sorts, all sorts of articulation scalier exercises. And these exercises really, really help developing the fingers for the scale and really test if we actually know the scale. Because if you can play all the forms 
in this fussel packet, then you know the scale pretty well. So we're gonna start with form nine, concert E flat, working on articulation and also the scale. And remember really quick, the articulation is slur two, tongue two. Da 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 da. Here we go. Slur two, tongue two, form nine, in E flat. One, three, one, two, ready. Personally, this is like my favorite part of the fussel packet because for me, it's just fun working on the technical aspect and the scales and just working those those fingers and that tonguing. And I'm going to demonstrate another form, form 13, that really tests if we actually know the scale. practice to really develop that scale not only developing the scale but developing our tonguey and our fast fingers and remember when we're doing articulation and moving our fingers fast you want to make sure that you don't lift your fingers you want to keep the fingers on the valves and you want to go straight up and down you don't want to go just straight up and down yeah. before we move on to the other parts of the fussel for us trumpet players, concert E flat gets a bit into that upper register, and there's a few very important things to remember when we're dealing with the upper register. The most important thing is that we gotta stay nice and relaxed. You don't wanna add any tension up here, you don't wanna push the mouthpiece against your face because that will just own the dial of damage and hurt you, and you don't wanna go down that path. You wanna make sure you stay nice and relaxed. And two, it's not about using more air, but it's about using faster air. To get to, the, to go up to those higher notes, you gotta use faster air, not more air. Don't think more air necessarily, think faster air. But you gotta stay nice, relaxed, and blow fast air. Don't think of them as high notes, think of them as fast notes. And now, the way to really develop that upper register is that it takes time for the Biggest thing is that it takes time, but also you gotta do lots and lots of long tones and lip slurs. Those two things will really help develop these muscles right here. But yeah, you gotta, when we're, you know, anytime we're playing concert E flat that goes up a bit, and or just in general, when we're playing anything that goes up into that upper register, if you're at any point you feel like you're tensing up and you're pushing the mouthpiece, just stop, put the trumpet down a bit, and then get back to it. You don't want to develop that bad habit. You want to make sure you stay nice and relaxed and you're using faster air. And to add on to that, that faster air all comes from the core. You got to push that air using your core. You got to push faster air while staying nice and relaxed. Yeah. Next part of the fussel packet, we have rhythm reading on page 40 and 41. These pages really help with reading and understanding and counting rhythms. It's basically like music vocabulary, like in English. These are like our vocab words. These are the rhythms that appear a lot in music. And these two pages help with that. Now, when we're doing these exercises, we're playing the scale we're working in. In this case, we're working on E flat, so we're gonna play concert E flat scale, going up and down the scale, and we're gonna play the rhythm that we see in each measure as we go up the scale. So we're gonna start on measure one. Measure one on page 40. And it's important to make sure to subdivide. Here we go. One, three, 
One, two, thirty. Doing those rhythm reading exercises, it's also helpful to count the rhythms before you play them in case you're struggling with the rhythms. Because first and for first and foremost comes the rhythms in these rhythm reading exercises. Got to make sure that the rhythm that we're playing the rhythm correctly and counting and writing in the count helps with that. So by working in the fussel packet every day as part of our warm-up slash technique building that will really help develop our the scale that we're working in by picking one scale for one week and playing that scale every day in the fussel that will really help developing the scale and getting it under our fingers. Yee. All right, before I show you guys a secret hack about scales, let's just review what the order of sharps and flats are. So the order of flats, in case you haven't heard of it, is just B, E, A, D, G, C, F. Bed, bed, that's the order of flats, so flats. And the order of sharps is just the order of flats reversed, so. F, C, G, D, A, E, B. Crazy, right? All right. Now, when it comes to scales, if there's one flat in the key signature, that flat will always be B flat. You will never have a scale where there's you oh you will never have a key signature where there's just one flat, but that flat just happens to be G. That will never happen. It, oh, if there's one flat, it always starts with B. If there's two, then it's B E. If there's three, B E A, and so on and so forth. The order of flats never changes, and neither does the order of sharps. So you're not gonna have a key signature that's three flats, but somehow it's B, G, and F. That That's not possible. It always goes in the same order. And the same thing for sharps. If you have one sharp, it's always gonna be F sharp. You, it can't be like just D sharp by itself. It's gotta be, if, you, if there was a D sharp in the key signature, it has to be F, C, G, and D. It can't just, just be D because if it's one sharp, has to be F because it always goes in order. E. All right, I'm gonna show you all a quick secret hack about scales, just to further prove that they're not scary and they're not as bad as some people might think. And this completely blew my mind, but you might've already noticed it, but I'm still gonna share it, so. Let's just go pick an easy example. Let's just go with concert B flat, B flat scale. Concert B flat, all right? Now for us trumpet players, concert B flat, we start on our note C. Start on our C for concert B flat, all right? So then we have to ask ourselves, hmm, what's the next letter in the alphabet after C? Hmm. Well, it would actually be D because D comes after C in the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then after D comes E. E, then F. G, A, B, and then we're back at C. Now, here's the kicker. Now, you got to apply the key signature to this. Let's look at our scale sheet. 
and we see that concert B flat has no flats or sharps so we do nothing to the scale we don't add any flats or any sharps we just leave it be this is the scale for us trumpet players for concert B flat these are the notes now let's go look at another scale let's look at let's look at E flat concert E flat all right concert E flat E flat for us trumpet players concert E flat we start on our note F and then after F comes after the letter F in the alphabet is A B C D E F G and then in music we only go up to G so after we go to G we just repeat back to A and then A and B C D E and F boom now let's look at the key signature and we see that concert e flat for us has one flat one flat and that's b flat so we go to b flat and we add a flat and that's it that's the scale scales are really just the alphabet while being applied to the key signature so if you know the key signature for whatever key then you know the scale it's not so bad after all it's just the alphabet whatever note it starts on then you have to apply the key signature that's the most important part you got to apply the key signature and then boom that's the scale isn't that crazy man that's so crazy Now another thing about these scales, it is not cheating if you just go ahead and circle all the flats like I did here for concert E flat. There is one flat which is B flat so I went ahead and circled the B flat to let me know that this note is flat and it's also not cheating if you write down the fingering in case you don't know. It's better to write down the fingering and circle the flat than to assume you know it's right but actually get the wrong fingering because then you have built bad habits and then it's harder to relearn something than to just learn it right the first time so it's not cheating to use your scale sheet to your full advantage and you know circle all the flats and write in the notes that you don't know because as because when you write it and you see it enough times your your brain will just remember it over over a certain amount of time that hey this note is this note is the fingering is one and this note is flat and this scale and I, you can just circle all the flats and sharps for each scale. Whatever it helps you, that's the most important part. And no, it's not cheating to write to write fingerings down or circle it because it's helping you and that's what really matters. Yeah, so don't be afraid to use your scale sheet to your full advantage. And if you have any questions about you know what a fingering is or what notes are flat or anything, you can always message me and I'll be happy to help. Yeah. Speaking of fingerings and notes, what about the chromatic scale? We haven't talked about that. And well, we sort of have talked about the chromatic scale. When, you know, the exercise Remington, we start on the concert F, our G. And then we go down in half notes. Well, we go down chromatically. exercise is based off of the chromatic scale and so is the lip slur exercise we're going chromatically down when we're doing those exercises so we sort of know the chromatic scale but we don't really know it in terms of how it's written on page. And when we were playing the chromatic scale, we usually play it in triplets. So just to give an example, just like with the other scales, we tongue up and slur down, but this time we're playing it in triplets. And I'll just demonstrate that right now. In triplets, playing it really slow. <laughs> scale start it slowly this is at 75 beats per minute and over time slowly speed it up to 120 beats per minute 
but first start it slowly and then speed it up you don't want to rush it and then with the chromatic scale if you know the chromatic scale you know all the fingerings and the notes because the chromatic scale has every single note that's crazy so it's important to also work on that chromatic scale as well as the other 12 major scales e. Just to recap everything, when we talk about scales, we're not talking about the scales of this fluffy dino. This is a good dino. But we're talking about these scales. And they're super important because scales, everything in music is based off of scales. So if you know the scales, a lot of things in music just become a lot easier to understand. So that's why we gotta practice those scales. And to learn all 12 of those scales, you first pick one scale and focus on that one scale for one week by doing exercises in the fussel packet, playing that scale slowly in whole notes, half notes, slowly speeding it up to 120 beats per minute and, sl and just slowly building up our being comfortable with that scale over a course of a week. And then the next week, you just add another flat or if you're working on sharps, you add another sharp and then you just repeat the process until you reach all 12 scales. So you just keep adding on one flat or one sharp, depending on if you started with flats or with sharps. And over time, over the course of you know several weeks, then you get really comfortable with the scale by practicing scale in the fussel packet and all that good stuff that we did in the video. And then for the chromatic scale, you just gotta play it slowly in triplets. Always, always, always play with the met, stay in time, super important. But yeah, since we're, we're coming into that holiday season, we're going to have a lot of breaks. So it's a really good, good idea and good way to practice during those breaks by working on those scales. Now, that'll keep us, that'll ensure that we're still playing during the holidays. And yeah.